What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, it's a very, very sad week. How are you? Oh, I've never been better. I don't know why, you know, you're saying you sort of first time. On, what was your name again? It's, it's, it's Jay Nog again, but Craig, whatever you want to, yeah. Craig, it's, uh, I don't know why they send somebody from the tech stuff agency who's having sort of a bad day because you are usually a very strong, I would even say upbeat podcast. You know, I would say upbeat was pretty positive because America is great. That's why I'm wearing my keep America great hat. Okay. We've upgraded from the make America great again hat. And I think is that, that technically uh, the new, is that the new slogan? Is that what you're rolling with? You know, it's sort of, you know how, well, Fox, you know, used to be 20th century Fox. Right. And then it turned to 21st century and they're like, we're 21st century Fox, but everybody kind of thinks of it as 20th century still. It's kind of like that. So we have to upgrade it, obviously, because we made America great. But, you know, the classic phrase that I invented, not Ronald Reagan, but I invented it was make America great again. So I don't know why you're negative because I think it's a beautiful time in America. It's a great time, you know, for our country. We, we lost a great women's rights leader. Um, well, okay. Supreme women's, Court justice. Women's, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. I don't know if you were listening back when we talked about the great men's rights activist, Roy Dan Hollander, okay? But this was, you know... Not every, no, one, no one mourned him. Nobody gave him sort of the respect he deserved. If anything, he was sort of fighting a tougher battle than Darth Vader Ginsburg, who I think is who you're going to bring up, right? That's everybody's talking about her. Nobody's talking, you know, everybody's talking about her, and that's okay. She, she had a good life. She did, you know, she was, her story, I will admit, was sort of an impressive story. But Den Hollander, he didn't, die of sort of natural causes he went out in a blaze of glory for men's rights that's a true hero so you're saying that he's a true hero Roy because Den he Hollander, died for his Ruth cause Bader Ginsburg, both three names both heroes both dedicated to the rights of of their people of their gender it's called gender so what you're telling me is that den hollander Roy Dent put some Roy respect Dan on his name. I'm Full sorry, name. three names. Okay, he died while fighting for his cause, so therefore he's a greater hero than Not Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I would say a stronger hero. You know, not. It's they're both very good. We respect them both. This is what I tried to make the point when we had that great episode. The three. What was it? The three champions of rights. Did, three champions you, of rights. You hear, yes. You heard that episode. A lot I've of people thought it. it was one of our strongest episodes. I think it's just when you talk about somebody who's done great things like, like, you know, Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda Bartholomew Ginsburg. When you do. Ruth, Ruth, Rhonda. Who? You always say like, have some respect on a name. And I think you're doing that on purpose, Mr. President. No, I can be honest. When I say Koala Bear Harris, that's making fun of a name. But no, no. Uh, uh, Ruby. Ruth, Ruth, Ruth. Ruby, Ruth. Ruby, like Ruby, Ruth. Vader, Ruby Vader Ginsburg was a great person and did a lot of, you know, I don't agree with her, but she did a lot of impressive things. But Roy Dan Hollander took his own, he was so committed that he took his own life to show that we don't value men's rights enough. Yeah, Nobody, Ruth, but... baby Ruth died, <laughs> you know, just of sort of natural causes, which is okay. We respect that too. But Roy Den Hollander went out. We call it a blaze of glory, a baiter of glory, you know, because of <laughs> baiter yeah. Ruth. You, you ever see the? Did you see the Goonies? Remember they loved the baby. Ruth? Yes, yes, I remember that chunk. That was a, yes, that was, yeah. a, that was a good movie. Yeah. The thing is, though, you never heard of Roy Den Hollander until he did what he did. You heard of Ruth Bader Ginsburg basically throughout her whole life. She's been a very successful woman, so she was a trailblazer. She had a reputation. She uh, 
did historical things throughout her career. Roy Den Hollander, you heard well, Roy of Den one Hollander. Time. That's the name. Isn't that what a true hero does? Is they do the work and they don't go for the glory. She didn't go for glory. She did the work and got the glory. Well, you know what? I think she, I, you know, Bla blaze of glory is better than Ginsburg glory. That's what I say. And Roy Den Hollander went out in a blaze of glory, but I'm, you're, you're making this into a sort of attack. I'm saying I respect both people greatly. I just don't think the two should be talked about in the same conversation, Mr. President. I just. Well, you talked about women. You, excuse me. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Sure. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I didn't say anything. You just, excuse me. You just said something. <laughs> excuse me. You brought up women's rights. I didn't bring up women's rights. You brought up women's rights. I simply brought up a champion of men's rights, which I thought was a natural topic to bring up. When you have a women's rights person, why can't I bring it? it it's sort of a natural thing. But do you really think Roy? Like if I bring Hollanders, up peanut butter, you're going to bring up jelly. And nobody you, will say, oh, that's crazy. Why are you bringing up jelly? You bring up a great person who worked for women's rights. She was a uh, great, she did a lot of things. Okay. I'm simply bringing up another great person who worked for men's rights. It's sort of, you know, as my great friend Shinzo taught me. Yin and yang. So you're telling me. There's sort of two, two parts of the same Asian messy circle. Yin and yang. That's what they I just, Remember Andrew Yang? Remember that whack job? It's not a whack job. Great businessman. And if he's going to do something. Yeah, but, well, he's, he's, he's lost. That counts as something. He lost big league. But Mr. President, you're, telling, you're trying to tell me that if Ruth Bader Ginsburg is the peanut butter, Roy Den Hollander is the jelly to her peanut butter on a sandwich. And not just because his brains looked like jelly when he shot himself, although that's a good, that's a good call. I think that's perfect. She's sort of the peanut butter. And his splattered brains when he bravely took his own men's rights life is the jelly. Literally, you could say even literally, sort of, you know, metaphorically and It's metaphorically. Wait, wait, did you say metaphorically? Yes. That's, That's not, it's metaphor, it's a f four. I said metaphorically. You said metaphorically. Excuse me. I know the word and I said, not the word you're saying. <laughs> What is it? Can you tell me what the word is? You know, I didn't realize, you know, you're the tech stuff guy, and obviously this is going to be your last time with the show. But, you know, you don't really, you sort of move the conversation along. It's not quiz time with, with the tech okay. stuff, Craig. Okay, fine. Um, so you're saying that Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Roy Den Hollander are, are both American heroes. The for the sizzle, rights that they the sizzle and the the sizzle and the steak. Okay, I, I didn't know they stood together in history, but I'm learning so much tonight. Now, you know the three I, champions of rights. I've never done this, but we might have to make room for a fourth champion. You know, so you've got Den Hollander, Roy Den Hollander, fighting very strongly to his death for men's rights. Yes, you have. Um, Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, well, excuse me. Okay, we, you sorry, know, sorry, you, sorry. You, you, you save him for last. Right, save okay. the headline. Show, show some respect. For women's rights, okay, you have, Ru, Ru, uh, you have baby Ruth Ginsburg. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yes. Well, whatever, you know, whatever your nickname she had, but baby Ruth Ginsburg for women's rights. For civil rights, we have. John Lewis, remember him, sort of a nasty guy, but he's a, and then the final person, the, the last, but certainly not least, except in terms of age of sexual partners, the great fighter of minority rights, the, the rights of minors with titties. That's where you get the word minorities. It combines minors and titties. And that was the life cause of the great the one and only, my friend, my spiritual advisor. I thought you didn't know him. Oh? <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey 
Epstein. We keep, you know, I asked Ivanka and Jared, you know, at one of the, one of the Kushner holidays, they hold a seat open, right? Is that uh, turnovers, apple turnover? Passover. You know, whatever, whatever they call it. Did you say Passover is apple turnover? Is that the analogy you made to the holiday? No, no, I was, no, I thought that was the name. Okay. Like, I knew there was an over. I was simply saying, is it over easy? Is it turnover? <laughs> you said it's Passover. Some people could disagree. But the point is they leave a seat open for Jeff oh, Epstein. People. At, uh, is it called the, 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 the neighbor? The, oh, the Seder, the Seder. Okay, the Seder. I thought it was the neighbor. But they leave a seat open at the Seder. Right. For Jeff Epstein. So, <laughs> so Jeff Epstein's Eliyahu? Is that what you're telling me? Eliyahu. <laughs> and I think now instead of three champions of rights, it's now, and you better, you put, this might as well be the title. We're calling it the Mount Rushmore of rights. I want to see. And it, she's a woman, by the way. We put a woman. The other Mount Rushmore doesn't have a woman. The one the Democrats want to demolish. So my Mount Rushmore of rights now has, by the way, it has a Den Hollander. I don't know if what, what faith he was, but he was probably a very strong Christian. Probably. You know, he, lived, he, he lived his life in a very Christian way. He had Epstein, who was a Jew. He had Ginsburg, who was a, a, a lady Kushner. Mm -hmm. And yet John Lewis, who was a black. That's a, that's a dinner party I'd like to watch. That's such a, look at that. That's a great idea. We could do like the holograms. Remember when they had six pack? When six Tupac. pack? It's Tupac, but you're four off. It's okay. When six pack uh, Shaq had the, remember Shaq? It was Tupac and it was, uh, one of, what was that festival in California they always have? Um, I don't know where all the celebrities go. Coachella? Coachella, yes. They had well, a hologram. It, it, Right, so they had a hologram and a six pack, so we could have holograms of all four of these people at a dinner party. I think that would, we could sell tickets. Why don't you do this at Disney World? They have the whole presidential, and the presidents come to life with the hologram. At the end of it, you witness a dinner party of the hologram of those four. Since the hologram's already there, it keeps it presidential and. Well, uh, you know, they'll have to give me sort of, you know, sort of a, a cut of the admissions. Well, of course, you did come up with the idea. Mr. President, I wanted to give you the opportunity, since Ruth Bader Ginsburg was such an important person to our country, um, fighting for gender equality, I was given the opportunity to give her the obituary that she deserves. Well, I, I, you know, and I'll say this, I've said nasty things, but I would never call her an obituary. <laughs> I think she was, you know, I disagreed politically, but I think she carried herself with you know, she wasn't, I think, a big fan of mine, but I can respect sort of that she carried herself with respect and had great intellect. So, no, I wouldn't call her an obituary. I would call her a nice lady. Okay. That is an obituary is when you speak on behalf of like a dead person or you could write about it too. So, but. Oh, okay. So like yep. a, uh, oh, okay. I've got you like an, a, 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 a loo, I think I just had a stroke. A, loo, a loogie G. Eulogy. It's like a eulogy, yes. A, a, well, we call it a eulogy when it's for a Kushner, right? <laughs> a eulogy. I will. Be. I will. Excuse me. I will. I will give the eulogy for the great Kushner, <laughs> Baby Ruth Ginsburg. She was somebody who made some okay decisions and some not so okay decisions. She apologized when she spoke nastily of me. So I, you know, would call her a nasty woman, but I take that back because she took her comments back. She was a respected lawyer. She worked very hard for what she, what she got, okay? And most importantly, when I saw pictures of her when she was young, Pretty good looking, mm. like a very cute, you know, in sort of that cute, that sort of cute Kushner way. She was kind of a little petite, cute thing with a big brain. She sort of turned into a Pixar character later in life, you know, like some little woman with the giant glasses. She looked like she belonged in a Disney cartoon. Okay. But 
you know, when she was young, she was, she was a very cute woman. And I, of all her accomplishments, I think I respect the fact that she was cute when she was younger. I think I put that at the top of the list. Like, you know, when they, when, when fake news writes her, uh, you, her eulogy, mm-hmm. I hope that they start with, she was a good looking little woman when she was younger. <laughs> you, and you she think- also did law things. She did law things as well. And we're going to respect her legacy by putting on a woman who can't wait to murder abortion doctors and take away the health care and rights of women across the country. And we're going to honor Darth Vader Ginsburg so strongly by putting on a woman. Remember when Thurgood Marshall, you remember him? He was sort of, he was this black that Mm -hmm. did things for blacks. Of course, he didn't care about whites. Nobody ever called him a racist though. All he was doing was helping the African Americans and everybody thought that was totally okay. If I did that, if I only helped white people, they'd say, oh, that's racist. But anyway, it's okay. Thurgood's not here anymore. He's probably with John McCain right now. (laughs) And what I'll say, though, is that they replaced Thurgood Marshall with the great Clarence Thomas. And it was sort of, I always thought that was funny that they said, okay, we lost the black. Well, we're going to give you the most self-hating, nasty black that's ever been. He's a black that harasses black women, that hates black people. Perfect. And that's what I'm trying to do with with whoever we put on the court. I want it to be somebody that, you know, is a woman, has, you know, I'll I'll check her. I'll check to make sure she's not sort of one of these transformers that has like different parts. I'm going to, so I'm going to grope. Part of the interview process is, it's kind of like a casting couch. You ever see the porns with the casting? I've seen but, them, yes. You know, for all these women, you do a sort of, you check, you check underneath the hood, as they say, to make sure they're, what they're working with. And, you know, once that's done, and if they pass the test and they hate women's rights and are anti sort of what, what uh, baby Ruth Ginsburg stood for, I'm going to put them in Mitch McConnell, the big turtle. He's going he's gonna to ram them through. He's going he's gonna to he's gonna forcibly push that woman through the Senate. That was a, a beautiful eulogy, Mr. President. Oh, yeah, and rest, rest. I can't say rest in power because that's for great people like Jeff Epstein. But rest in peace. Uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That person, rest in rest in peace, whoever you are. You you mentioned power, powerful, huge. We have our sponsor this week, BenOnline.ag, Mr. President. <laughs> and let me just tell you, we got baseball playoffs, basketball championships, Stanley Cup finals, golf, UFC, and the fi- wait is finally over. Football's back. We are in full groove of the NFL. I know you don't approve the whole protesting, Mr. President, but we are back. Did you watch this week at all? I watched a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, You know, I I sort of, I like watching my friend Tom Brady. Okay, Mm -hmm. so I make sort of an exception. He'll never, believe me, he'll never kneel for the anthem. He's too, he's, he's too strong. He's too patriotic. He loves this country. Well, on betonline.ag, you can bet on Tom Brady. There's different props betting. You can bet on any Buccaneers if they're going to win over a certain amount of games. Um, you, might, you might not be at a game this year, but all the action here is on betonline.ag. They go on the extra mile to make sure you can get on everything imaginable this season from gain spreads and totals to team, player, and coaching props. Like I just said before, Mr. President, Bet Online gives you more options to wager than any place online. This is where I do all my betting every Sunday. I go to betonline.ag, place my wagers. You get on their season opening bonuses today and start off wagering on win, division, and championship futures today. So join now. You get a welcome bonus. Head to Bed Online online today and take advantage of all the great sign-up bonuses. Bed Online, your online sportsbook experts, betonline.ag. So check them out if you're going to be betting on football or any of the championships coming up. Mr. President, that, uh, that, that eulogy was, was interesting can we please talk about how when Obama was president, you, um, well, not you, but 
GOP would not allow him to fill the seat. And now the same thing is happening, but you're going forward and filling the seat that you said Obama shouldn't fill. Don't you see that's hypocritical? No, not at all. Can you explain why it's not? I could. May you please do that for our listeners? Well, it's very simple, okay? Obama was lucky enough. America let him be the president, okay? It was, they said, okay, we'll let it be a black. But then he wanted to do all the presidential things. You know, he wanted to do everything, and it was like, slow down. You know, you're just the first African-American president. You don't get the same sort of rights. You know, I'm the 44th white president. Are you saying that because President Obama was black, he doesn't get the same rights of all the white presidents? No, I'm saying, well, no, no, excuse me, not racist. (laughs) What I'm saying is, it's very, okay, it's very simple. You have to just listen, okay? Can you listen sort of clearly? I'm listening. It's like he showed up and he was African American. And it was like, congratulations, you're the first. But you still have to wait. You don't get all the presidential power on the first. You have to wait, you know, like maybe the 10th African-American president will have the full powers. So I think he was very arrogant. He thought he could do what he wanted. And they told him no. Whereas I am the 44th white president. We have total power. We've earned, it's called earning it. And you said not racist before, but it sounds it sounds a little racist. I don't know. You're telling me that because you're a white president and there have been 43 before you, you can do things quicker and have more power than a black president, the first black president. And you said there has to be more black presidents in order for him to get the full wield of power. But not racist. No, no, it's totally. You know, there's race involved, I'm not saying it, but it's not racist. It's sort of respect for tradition. I have a lot more power than George Washington had, okay? Okay. Obama was like the black George Washington. He has to wait. You know, maybe in the year 3,140, there'll be an African-American Trump, although I hope not. And You're thinking another 1,000 plus years before another black president? Well, it's one every 200 <laughs> something years. So it's, I think they'd be lucky to get one by 3,000, whatever. The year 8,000, <laughs> do whatever you want to do. You have full African American powers. All right. Mr. President, before we speak about who um, the finalist for the replacement is, you. Um, the, re- the reviews and the ratings are coming in for um, this podcast. It's growing tremendously. I must give you props for that. Congratulations. Well, I don't want props. I'm white. So props are for African-Americans. Congratulations. Thank you. That's more appropriate. No, we're doing very strongly. We want what we need, though, from people. And they've been a little, I would say, not so great in one respect. And that's in terms of the reviews. Thank you to everybody who's given us reviews, but we are, we are in a sort of powerful moment for this show. We are. As I get reelected. And what we want is, is a tall, it's a tall order. I'm, I'm admitting it's a strong thing we're asking. We want to get to a thousand reviews and 3000 ratings on Apple tunes and it's iTunes, iTunes, whoever it is, it's me tunes. So, <laughs> We want that because it raises our show in the rankings. It has our show get featured more. And it costs nothing. Everybody from the Mapigas to the Mapi- Well, not the Mapigas. If you don't leave a review, you are a Mapiga with a hard R. But our Patreon, from our Patreon patriots to our Mapigas, every review counts. Every five stars counts. So we want to get to 3,000 ratings. We call that KKK. We want to get to three, you know, because a K is 1,000. So if you get yes, to 3,000, it it's three It's also Ks. something else too, but it is 3,000. You're correct. Right. I, I know I'm correct. I didn't I need you to sort okay. of tell me I'm correct. Sorry. 
and a thousand reviews, we will go up the charts so fast your head would spin. But it requires everybody who listens to this. If you have no money, if you just love listening to the free, strong, powerful, tremendous episodes, you go on iTunes and you go click five stars and you write a sentence, you write a paragraph, you write two words. All of it counts. We need to see a huge bump this week, but we, we want everybody who can to do this in the next like two weeks because this is the time for the show to have the highest profile. And if you listen on Stitcher, we see your reviews there too and we appreciate it. If you listen there, feel, make sure you give a review there. Also for the Patreon Patriots, we have a new video coming out this Thursday for the Perfect 10 and then on Tuesday- And don't the share the video, okay? I don't mean to be sort of cheap like a Kushner. But don't share the video. It's exclusive. It's exclusive property of the perfect tens. Okay. You pay for it. If you share it with other people, you know, it's sort of bootlegging. And maybe we have a few sneaky African Americans or Asians who are bootlegging it and selling it in barber shops or on the subway. But for the most part, we hope that you don't do that. So no bootlegging. You only can watch it. Don't share it. If they want access to our great videos, they should have to join the Patriot because we see the, excuse me, we saw the numbers this week. We had a big jump. We had more views than perfect 10 subscribers. And that's a big sign that somebody was doing something not so nice. Well, you heard it, people. Don't be a bootlegger. Also, we have a new video coming with out. With a hard R, perfect. bootlegger with a hard R. <laughs> that's right. And Mr. President, you'll be debating Joe Biden next week. And we have an exclusive Q&A and post-debate episode that will be happening at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on the 29th, Tuesday. Check that out. Right after, the, after I destroy Sleepy Joe, I'm going to come right to the podcast, okay? Nobody, Obama never did this. And Joe Biden's going to go have a warm glass of milk and, and, you know, fall asleep in a, you know, in a car bed or something like, like he's an infant. <laughs> but I'm, here's the thing. The Perfect Ten were very nice to us during the convention weeks. Remember this? They allowed us. We shared the episodes with everybody. Right. Not anymore, okay? The freebies are over. If you want to get access to join the Q&A and hear the post-debate episode, and we're going to be doing an episode after every debate. So next month is going to be the mother load. And I say that because literally Mike Pence is debating, so it's going to be the mother load. <laughs> and after each debate... There will be a Q&A and an episode only for the perfect 10. So even if you only want to do it for two months, this is the two months to either join at the perfect 10 or upgrade to the perfect 10. You know, it's, it, if you don't do it, I don't know what you do. You, you, it's sort of pathetic if you're not doing the sort of strong upgrade. And it's patreon.com slash MPGA. Mr. President, you're And check out our website. You're doing, you're new. I know you're new, so it's okay. MPGAPod.com. We have great I was going to talk to him after about that, but okay, yeah. MPGAPod.com, Mr. President. No, you know what? Talk to them after then. Excuse me. <laughs> well, Mr. President, you're finalists for the replacement of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. No Jews. Um, they are women, though. They are women. Are women. And I want to hear your take on these two women who are your finalists. Break them down for me, kind of like you used to do on the Miss America pageant. Now, Amy Coney Barrett. What do you think of her? I think she's a powerful justice. She, spoke, she was a teacher. She was a professor at Notre Dame. Uh, she hates abortion. She adopted... She has a, a disabled child, gross, but okay. It shows that at least she's sort of pro, pro-life. And also she adopted two Haitian children, I think, if I heard that correctly. You know, so she's, what I like about that is that she's going to totally destroy the liberals with her decisions, but then she can like put a, her adopted Haitian kids out front like a human shield and say, you can't attack me. I've got two kids from a shithole country. I'm better than you liberals. Look, I walk the walk. Uh, uh, <laughs> so okay. she's sort of, uh, she can't be defeated by the libs. She sort of does the nice lib things. I don't even know if she wanted to. I don't know if she even wanted these kids, but it was great strategy to adopt Haitian kids because now she looks 
nicer than all the liberals. But then she can do the mean things that I want her to do, like destroy Obamacare. So her, her, her disabled child and her Haitian adopted children, you think, are a front for her to be a mastermind of evil? 100%. And that's <laughs> why she is my number one choice. Now, this other woman, I'm surprised she is Cuban descent. I'm very surprised that you would pick someone who... Well, they're Cuban. the only Latinos that vote Republicans, so they're okay. Uh, Barbara Lagoa. Can you can you tell have you her seen so this woman? I call her the creature from the blue Lagoa. <laughs> She's not a pretty sight, Mr. President. You don't think so? I've let me tell you. When they said to me a Lat Latina judge, I thought I was going to be looking at sort of like an Eva Longoria type. Not so much. Or an AOC. More like AO double D. But yes, I agree. <laughs> That's what I was sort of hope. We need we need our own AOC. You know, we have too many. Candace Owens is just a mess. And we have all this sort of, I get almost tired of the, the Republican blondes at this point. It's sort of a cliche. If we could turn AOC, if we could become like a, a Republican pimp and turn her out into a GOP weapon, I tell you, melatonin would be in trouble. Wow. You would, if AOC would turn to Republican side and be interested in you, would you get a divorce while being president for AOC? Can we do this off the record? Of course, we are off. Oh, I, I, without question. <laughs> you know, because let me tell you something. Not only am I bored of melatonin, AOC is like 30 years old. That's prime real estate. She's got those great cans. And imagine how defeated, imagine how defeated the left would be if we put out a Trump rails AOC sex tape <laughs> from the Oval Office, just film it with a top, top, top notch film crew. And it's just me having great marital sex with AOC. And, and, and the truth is it wouldn't be AOC. It would be AOCT. So she wouldn't even have the same. In fact, I think she'd have to get rid of the C. I'd tell her to get rid of the O and the C. You know, because whenever a person has a hyphenated last name, it means that their father was very weak. Okay. You know, AOC, Ocasio-Cortez, that means her father was probably Ocasio. And the wife was like, but what about Cortez? And a real man would have said, fuck Cortez. <laughs> and instead, a fake man goes, let's hyphenate it. Let's be... Total cocks. Let's be, instead of Cortez, why don't we call her a Alexandria Ocasio cock? Because I'm a total cock. Because I'm allowing your weak feminine name to be part of my legacy. Uh, so I would say get rid of the Ocasio and the Cortez. And now it's Trump. Alexandria Trump. A-T. With the D. Double. Well, I was saying with the Donald. Okay, I got you. But now, yes, double. Mr. President... But can um, you imagine, I, I want you to ima imagine we did that to the left. Imagine how defeated they would be. Um, it, would, it would definitely be a big The only thing the worse left. would be, and I know Mike Pence wants to do this for a fact, I think the only thing more demoralizing would be if Pence plowed Bernie Sanders from behind. <laughs> the sexual gimp for Christ. I think that's the only thing that could defeat the left. I don't know. But AOC is their future, so they might feel more defeated if they saw my, uh, you know, thick Trump body just on top of AOC, just creating a, a, new, spa, a, a new political child that would rule the country. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> that would be um, a beautiful child, Mr. President. Well, it'd be tremendous. No, and that I'm would be his name, Tremendous Trump. <laughs> You know, because the ethnics like to come up with the weird first names. So I think we could, you know, sort of do a combo. A tremendous Trump would be honoring both uh, of our cultures. That would be great. Now, Mr. President, moving on, we have two more topics to cover. Um, I don't know if a congratulations in order, but 200,000 COVID deaths. How do you feel? You know, they said it couldn't be done and we got it done. 
You know, it's about having that total commitment. You have to be, every day you have to wake up and be committed to not wearing masks, to getting your people to love free, to, you know, scream about freedom. And it's called the freedom to die. Unless, unless you're a sick person and you want to die, then we stop you. The it's, thing called, is. it's called pro-life. But if you're a healthy person and you just don't like masks, go out there. You have the total freedom to die. We just don't want you to, you know, if you have a terminal disease and you're in pain, we don't want to support that because we're you, pro-life. Are you going to change your stance on wearing a mask? It's getting colder out now. A lot of the scientists say that light and heat killed COVID and flu season coming. Are you going to encourage to wear a mask? It's getting colder now. The election's coming up. Do you think that would sway voters your way or are you just going to still go no mask? My followers do not like masks. I have worked them so well that it doesn't matter. If, if you want to show them the Jim Carrey movie, The Mask, they will boo you and beat you up. That's, <laughs> how, much, that's how much they hate masks now. So it's, there are no masks. We're going to go for whore immunity and it's, you know, it's we're her, see her, you mean herd immunity you're going to go for where everyone's together and that's why you've been together around the same amount of people that no one uh, can get COVID is, or whore immunity, meaning that hookers are going to sleep with everyone and that's how it's going to cure COVID. Uh, well, they, you know, I think those both sound like sort of <laughs> options. So we'll see what happens. No, but it's, you know, Obama could never do this. Sleepy Joe could never get to 200,000. They didn't even crack 12,000 when they had a, a big virus. So, you know, everything we do is stronger than anybody else. And Mr. President, you are a big fan of uh, the show that won an Emmy. I want to talk to you about two shows that, that won Emmys. The first is Euphoria, the show on HBO uh, Zendaya, she won an Emmy for her performance on that show. Didn't you love that show? You told me you... I liked it a lot. I, it, you know, at first it took, it was a little tough to watch because, you know, I, I felt like Jeff Epstein was sort of like Moses, like he had led his people, <laughs> but he couldn't enter the promised land. You know, for there to be a great show about big breasts, well, Zendaya is very beautiful, but doesn't have the big breasts, but there's a girl on that show this beautiful blonde watch out AOC you might you know you might have competition this is a beautiful woman enormous breasts and I'm looking at this going they made my friend Jeff Epstein my great friend the great Jeff Epstein feel so bad for being so pro-youth like I said he was a champion of minority rights minors with titties we condensed it to minority he was such a champion and this show it's so bittersweet for this show to be on after he passes. This would have been the culmination of his life's work. This is, it, it was so, it, but after a while I said, okay, we'll get over it. Jeff isn't here, but you, Donald Trump, can still enjoy beautiful teenagers having powerful sex. So you're happy that it won. I think the show deserved great recognition. It would have been nice if Zendaya had thanked Jeff Epstein in her speech, but, you know, maybe maybe she forgot. Did you ever win an Emmy for The Apprentice? You know, it's one of the things that, it's when I really learned that the Hollywood elites were really the fake fake news, fake media, just terrible people. Mm -hmm. They never gave The Apprentice, even though it's, as you know, considered the greatest reality show of all time by just about everybody. They never gave me an Emmy. They were so jealous they couldn't give me an Emmy. So it's a disgrace. Do you know who won the Emmy for best reality show? And I think is a multiple time winner at this show. Was it Rand Paul from Kentucky? It's, it's RuPaul's Drag Race. Who's Ru RuPaul, the big, the big drag black? I don't know if you call her a drag black, but... Sure. Um, yes. Well, that's drag what queen. the great Fred Trump used to always say. If he saw if he saw a black, he'd say, "Go drag that black." <laughs> so I thought that was the sort of term of the. You know, I thought that isn't that the sort of the ballroom they call it the ballroom <laughs> culture. No, that is, that is not the term. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race, I think, multiple time Emmy winner. How do you feel about that? That RuPaul's Drag Race 
won multiple Emmys and you never won an Emmy. Well, it shows you how PC we've become that, you know, Trump can't win because Trump's a powerful, handsome white man. But, you know, a black puts on makeup and becomes, you know, a superstar. Now, I will say this. Big A Mike Pence is actually, you know, a pretty he, – he did tell me that Drag Race was a solid show. <laughs> I, You know, maybe he was not being totally honest with me. Maybe he didn't want to say how much he liked it because he knew it would get me mad. But right. I think our great vice president is a strong supporter. So I'm not as angry as you'd think I'd be. I mean, I'm disappointed. I think they never recognized The Apprentice the way they should. But I will say that my very loyal – sexual gimp for Christ is somebody I trust. And he said that RuPaul's Drag Race was, uh, he said it was a solid show. So, you know what? I'm in such a good mood about being able to nominate a strong Supreme Court justice. And I gave such a great eulogy that I will say congratulations to Rand Paul's Kentucky Drag Race. Well, um, I'm sure she's very happy for the congratulations. Mr. President, I want to wish you luck next week during the debate. I'm not going to – well, actually, I'll see you before the debate and after the debate. So just uh, good well, luck in the fired, preparation. Well, you're whoever they send in your place will uh, hopefully do stronger. No problem. And, and good luck in the preparation for our listeners out there. Please leave uh, the ratings and reviews this week. It helps with the algorithms and puts us up the charts. And these are uh, two big months coming up for us. So please support, tell a friend. We appreciate everyone out there. Um, the new website, mpgapod.com. We have some limited edition t-shirts for the election. So uh, grab those. And uh, we have a new YouTube page with some unseen footage from live episodes of uh, some cracking up and some joking around. So check that out. And the Patreon, new video coming out this Thursday. And plus a debate uh, episode for the Perfect 10 next week, Tuesday, 1030 Eastern Standard Time. That's patreon.com slash MPGA. Thank you for betonline.ag. And pig is out there. I am recording a special in a parking lot, outdoor seating and cars. I'm asking the piggas. I know we got my piggas out here because we did a live show and a story and some of you came out. So come on out, Bel Air Diner, October 3rd, 8 p.m. special, October 3rd, 8 p.m., belairdiner.myc. Get your tickets. Let me see some of the piggas out there and represent. And uh, thank you for all for listening. We appreciate you. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Very strong. And hey, everybody, it's JL. How are you? Uh, thanks for listening. We already made all our announcements, so you know what to do. We need those ratings and reviews up, up, up in a big way. It would be very helpful. And, you know, we're looking to get more exposure for the show in the next month and a half because this is, this, is, this is our sweeps, sweeps month, our, our month and a half. But the next three and a half to four months is going to be huge for us. So the more exposure we get uh, is, is helpful. So if you haven't left a review or given five stars, uh, please do so. If you've only given the stars, write up a review. But we'd love to see those really shoot the fuck up this week. Sorry for my language, but it's a, it's a, big, it's a big month and a half for us. Um, we've got advertisers. We've got deals for other advertisers. I don't mean to make this like totally ruthless, but we've, we've worked at this show for two and a half years and most of that time was totally unpaid and underappreciated. So now we have a chance at, you know, the money, we're not asking you for the money unless you want to join the Patreon, but you can do free stuff for us that will help us get money. So spreading the word, giving us good reviews and shit, uh, much appreciated. So thank you. Um, and, uh, God help us all.